technology supported by Invest India and Startup India. Today, our inaugural address is on digital adoption and cyber resilience. The chief guest for our session for this for his inaugural address is Lieutenant General Dr. Rajesh Pant, National Cyber Security Coordinator, Government of India. And alongside, we have we have Mr. Vipin Sirilia, Head Risk Services. India and South Asia for uh, for visa. I would request Mr. Surilia to start off with the opening remarks and introduce Dr. Rajesh, uh, Dr. Rajesh Pan for this for this exciting session on digital adoption and cyber resilience. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good morning, afternoon, evening, all depending on which GPS coordinates you have dialed in from for this very first edition of Pursuit 2021. It's the largest reg tech compliance, AML and cybersecurity event spread over two days, uh, today and tomorrow. The theme for this year's edition is combating financial frauds with technology. And it is an effort to bring key stakeholders here and discuss how they are using innovation and emerging technologies in our constant and evolving fight against financial frauds. As Soham mentioned, we are today very privileged to have amid us a very distinguished guest, Lieutenant General Rajesh Pant, National Cybersecurity Coordinator, Prime Minister's Office, Government of India, to deliver the keynote address. Sir requires no introduction to this community. Lieutenant General Dr. Rajesh Pant is an internationally recognized cybersecurity expert who's uh, presently tenanting, uh, that's what his office is the prestigious appointment of National Cyber Security Coordinator in the National Security Council Secretariat of India. In this capacity, he is responsible for coordinating all activities across multiple sectors to ensure a secure and resilient cyberspace within the nation. Uh, Sir holds a PhD degree for his research in the inf field of information security matrices. He is also MTech from IIT Kharagpur. MPhil from Madras University and Masters of Management Studies from Osmania University. Prior to his current appointment, he was the head of the Army Cyber Training Establishment for three years. He served in the Army Signal Corps for 41 years, where he was awarded three times by the President of India for distinguished service of the highest order. Consequent to his retirement, uh, he was chairman of a listed electronics company peer review member of NAAC and governing council member of electronics Administration uh, India. General Pant brings to the table an interesting mix of military operations, academic excellence, corporate governance and cyber security wisdom. May I now invite Lieutenant General Pant to deliver the keynote address. The topic of the keynote today is digital adoption and cyber resilience. Post the keynote, I have a few questions that I'll Post to General Pant. Uh, I will request the audience to keep posting their questions in the chat window if you want to ask a question. Uh, over to you, sir, for the keynote. Thank you, Vipin, and uh, greetings of the day to all the viewers of this uh, very exciting event. Uh, I like the overall theme, combating financial frauds with uh, technology. Uh, but a word of caution from my side is that uh, don't depend only on the technology. Uh, the other two uh, ends of the triangle of people and process are equally important, if not more, as most of the uh, frauds and attacks that we find are related to the uh, weakest link in the chain. Uh, having said that, uh, let me first thank the Internet and Mobile Association of India and the other organizers for uh, having me here. Uh, I like this. Uh, name that you've given to the first edition, Pursuit 2021. And after you ask me the questions in the end, uh, please answer my question also as to what is this pursuit for? Is it for excellence? Is it for knowledge? Or as Bertrand Russell said, is it for the happiness? So um, give it a thought and I will ask you in the end. But let me start with uh, you know the topic given to me for this keynote, uh, that is digital adoption and cyber resilience. Uh, I think these two aspects are, you know, opposite sides of the same coin. You can't have one without the other. If you uh, have to adopt 
the digitalization, uh, then you have to ensure that you work in a safe and secure uh, cyberspace environment. In fact, uh, today, digital adoption, uh, let me tell you, is a mild word. What the pandemic has done to us is actually what is referred to as the DX or the digital transformation, where something that was expected to happen after uh, five, six years happened in a matter of uh, weeks or months. And uh, we all saw the effects of that, that the moment the lockdown was announced uh, by our Prime Minister uh, around 25th of March last year, everyone went into the work from home environment and everything became tele. You know, the word tele means from a distance. So whether it was telehealth, whether it was tele-education, uh, whether it was tele-business for that matter, remote working, everything depended on the online. And this is what is called as the digital transformation that took place, that suddenly, you know, your endpoints became important. And from the cybersecurity point of view, the architecture flipped on its head because the concept of having a port and a moat, that is, you have a enterprise behind a very secure firewall and the IPS, IDS, uh, behavioral analytics, and then you have a nice uh, seam uh, and a SOAR uh, to uh, check the logs and manage your network. Uh, that uh, now had to cater for all the distributed uh, workforce that was working from their homes or anywhere for that matter. So uh, this is the first impact that uh, took place uh, that uh, because of uh, the digital adoption or the digital transformation, whatever you want to call it, uh, this uh, work from home uh, led to a very different cybersecurity architecture. And we'll speak of this in a moment as to what all it uh, uh, led to. But before that, it also led to a surge in cybercrime. And since the audience is more of the uh, from the financial sector, I'm told uh, all of you are aware that uh, the World Economic Forum declared that uh, cybercrime is the largest man-made threat to uh, the economy. Uh, ever in fact and as per some estimates the total global loss due to cyber crime last year was six trillion us dollars six trillion and if last year was the year uh, of a perfect storm as they say in cyber crime the way 2021 has started i would call it the year of ransomware because if you see uh, the major attacks that have taken place this year uh, in the us you can take for example the way it started off with uh, solar winds and then uh, your recent JBS foods, then the colonial pipeline. Colonial pipeline paid $4 million as ransom. JBS food has paid $11.5 million as ransom. And now the recent uh, Kaseya attack has crippled almost 1,000 companies. So the scale is becoming larger and larger. And this year, we are only halfway through this year and already $1 trillion has been paid as ransom. So the financial sector, will have to be absolutely up to its toes and ensure that all the efforts required for cyber resilience are put into place or your mitigation techniques and your uh, you know recovery techniques etc so what are some of these measures well the first one uh, is called the zta or the zero trust architecture so there are a uh, lot of articles written on this you can serve the net what it means as to how identity and access management has suddenly become very important. That is, are you the person uh, whom you claim to be? So how do I confirm your identity? Do I do it via uh, biometrics or via some other uh, two-factor authentication, etc.? Then uh, your location becomes important. Your, the device that you're using becomes important. And of course, the application that you're using becomes important. So in the zero trust architecture, the endpoint uh, becomes very important. And after that, your entire network, starting from your home access point to the service provider's network, also becomes very important. Uh, whether it is the VPN you are using or the cloud services that you are using, especially since, as I said, I'm talking to the financial sector, and most of you are dependent on uh, the cloud services, whether it is your own enterprise uh, within the bank, you have your own data centers, etc. But uh, in terms of ransomware, now you have to be very careful. So what are some of the best practices uh, in cloud security? Uh, firstly, that your virtual machines that you utilize, 
for compute uh, as well as the uh, memory that uh, you have taken in that uh, uh, data center for your application that should be distributed into network segments so segmentation is is a very important aspect and that is a counter to the ransomware also so that at least if there is a ransomware attack then only a portion of the data gets encrypted uh, and uh, you know at least the rest of it uh, can be safe then uh, all the outbound traffic uh, from the virtual machines has to be monitored and has to be you know whitelisted and restricted uh, there are a lot of these security features that are to be done in the cloud aspect uh, the, all the administrative connections are through the respective network segment uh, this bastion server some of you in the business may be knowing it uh, and then the user level then the access uh, policies have to be very clearly defined a two factor authentication i told you is a must now for the identity and access management and then of course the old practice of a strong password policy uh, you mix up the small letters with the capital and the special characters uh, minimum eights and uh, with the numerals etc that's very important and you must force Uh, these are some of the aspects then of course the data sanitization uh, uh, has to be done as well as uh, you know there is this open web application security project uh, they have some good guidelines uh, for how your application has to be uh, protected and then finally of course the cyber security audit uh, has to be done very seriously you just don't do it perfunctorily by clicking the minimum number of boxes in fact if you go to the cert uh, in uh, uh, portal you would find that recently we have also created the minimum base uh, baselines for conducting a cyber audit which is very important and which must be done periodically and with all seriousness and then of course uh, the logging is very important because i have seen people spending you know crores of rupees in uh, installing a firewall but their uh, server configuration is so poor uh, that uh, it doesn't you know make a difference and if you have organized uh, uh, security uh, uh, information and event management or seem as it is called then somebody has to be seeing the logs that log monitoring is very important and what logs you see and for how long you keep all those aspects are very important so the cyber security today in fact yesterday i was reading a article uh, it's from the uk's national uh, cyber security center on uh, what the board what is the responsibility of board members for cyber security and you can go to the uk ncsc's uh, website and see that it's a very interesting document as to what the board does and what the ciso does uh, i i would highly recommend all of you to read that so coming back to the measures that uh, especially in the financial sector uh, you have to take for uh, digital uh, adoption as well as the uh, cyber resilience the second aspect is that you have to be very careful about the supply chain attacks why i'm saying it is because uh, this year there have been two major ones uh, starting off from the colonial pipelines uh, or rather the solar winds uh, the uh, solar winds attack as you know uh, solar winds is a company and they have a product called orion which is a network monitoring software and they have 18000 clients so look at the selection of the application also that they have uh, in the supply chain firstly they impact the supply chain and then that malware gets sent to 18000 clients and there it has got visibility of all the network components so uh, from that uh, you know it, it is a, in some sense a master stroke and a very intense and exercise which would definitely require a large infrastructure which is why they are saying that it is most probably you know state backed etc but uh, supply chain earlier we used to talk of only the hardware that be careful from where the uh, the semiconductors have been designed and where the fab Uh, has taken place and where the atm pay the packaging etc has been done but now both the hardware as well as the software supply chain attacks are a very real real and serious threat and we have to be careful about that so how do you keep your server update updated uh, etc and how do you ensure that uh, the updates are sanitized uh, then uh, is the aspect of the data Uh, again in the financial sector you know your data is very important and you are holding uh, sensitive and uh, personal data and all of you are aware of the personal data protection bill uh, which uh, on monday when the uh, parliament session begins monsoon session of the parliament uh, i am hoping that uh, it is introduced after the 
JPC has been discussing it for the last uh, couple of months under Ms. Minakshi Lekhi's uh, chairmanship. But uh, the PDP bill, as you're aware, is on the lines of the GDPR. So all of you must start understanding what it implies that uh, in case a breach is not reported within 72 hours, this is in the GDPR, mind you, then uh, the uh, data fiduciary is fined uh, almost 20,000 uh, euros or 4% of your uh, revenues, whichever is more. So uh, what is a data principal? Who is a data processor? What are the responsibilities of a data fiduciary? Uh, there will be a data protection authority of India that will be established. Uh, and then they will uh, classify what is personal data, what is sensitive, what stays inside the country, what is cross-border free flow, etc. So it uh, needs to be understood. Uh, and in all probability, the data protection officer uh, of, of the enterprises and the companies initially will be the CISO only. So the responsibility of the CISO is going to become more and more important. With the threat surface expanding, uh, with the nature of threat expanding, you know, we've not discussed the crypto part, uh, etc. Uh, and uh, this data aspect that I mentioned, and the IoT devices coming in in Industry 4.0 as when the uh, 5G comes. So the entire, uh, you know, environment is going to uh, change. So uh, CISO uh, cannot be just, you know, any officer of the establishment that you appoint and make him CISO and tell him that you accept all the letters that come related to IT and cybersecurity, it, it can't happen that way. So uh, uh, I would uh, strongly advise that uh, a well-qualified CISO be appointed, uh, which, uh, you know, his knowledge is continuously updated. And you do these uh, rehearsals, like we have the cyber crisis management plans, uh, where four levels of crisis are defined at the enterprise level, at a, a group of uh, sector level, and then at a state level and national level. So some sort of uh, these exercises will have to be done by everyone because now cybersecurity is everyone's responsibility. And uh, in terms of the critical sectors, most of the critical sectors today fall in the private sector. If you see telecom, all our major players, uh, the Reliance and the Airtels and the Vodafone are uh, in the private sector. Only about uh, 8 to 10 percent is with BSNL. Uh, similarly, in the power sector, a lot of private companies are there. So uh, in case uh, there are these, you know, state-backed uh, APT, as it is called, advanced persistent threat attacks. Then uh, the private sector uh, has to be equally prepared for it. And in the private sector, it, the attack actually starts off with the individual. So one phishing mail is sent to the individual, and then that clickbaiting, if he falls for it, one out of 100 falls for it, that's enough. Because then when he gets inside that system, then he activates a remote access uh, uh, Trojan, and then he does the, uh, you know, the... You must study the Mitra attack framework as to how attacks take place. Because I always keep saying, unless you know how attacks take place, you do, will not understand how to defend. So this aspect of lateral spread and escalation of privileges, etc., obfuscation and how the exfiltration takes place or needs to be understood so that you can take the preventive, uh, preventive measures. So there are lots of actions to be taken uh, while you digitally adopt, because now there is no option uh, uh, in even the post-pandemic environment to go in for the digitalized uh, aspect of whether it is governance or whether it is providing the services. And that is what is happening at the national level also. But uh, cyber res resilience and how to prepare for it is equally important. That is that is the message I want to give. So uh, finally, what is the government doing? Well, uh, for the first time, I think in the history of independent India, uh, the Prime Minister last year on 15th of August had announced that uh, cyber security is very important for the nation's uh, economic growth and uh, society. Uh, and since then, we've taken a number of steps. One was in December, where to cater for the supply chain aspect that I mentioned, uh, the government has issued a directive, which is called the National Security Directive on the telecom sector. And that is being implemented through a portal, trustedtelecom.gov.in, where all the products that are going to be connected in the ne networks uh, within the nation are going to be trusted products. Uh, and there is a you know, concept behind it, that is one. Second is that uh, the government had created a task force for uh, creating a new national cybersecurity strategy, which has been submitted to the cabinet for final approval. So as and when that comes out, you will find that you know the entire ecosystem is being addressed in all aspects uh, that, had, uh, that had been you know, 
changing from our earlier 2013 policy are being addressed in this and it is a very futuristic uh, five year strategy so these are the uh, two uh, three major aspects so i will take a pause here uh, and then uh, you know wait for vipin to ask me if there is anything but thank you very much and i wish the event all success thank you jai hind thank you sir uh, thank you for that mini master class which you gave us on different aspects of cyber security so uh, first question i had is uh, around the recently published report so recently itu the intertelecommunication union published the fourth edition of global cyber security index as per the report uh, we are happy to note that india has jumped from number 47 Uh, to number ten, hearty congratulations to you and the team on behalf of all of us and the nation on this feat. And for our delegates, uh, here is some context uh, on what this index is. So the Global Cyber Security Index is a trusted measure of the commitment made by each country to cyber security at a global level. And each country's level of development or engagement is assessed along five different pillars, which includes legal measures, technical measures. organizational measures capacity development cooperation and then it's into, uh, aggregated to into an overall score uh, sir we are all very proud of this work that you and your team have continuously done to bring about this result i'm sure this involved a lot of hard work since the last report and a vision of what you wanted to achieve i would request you to share with our audience today the background and the various parts and processes in making this quantum jump thank you vipin and i am glad you asked me that question because it is a very uh, positive development you know in this gloomy pandemic scenario and we were equally happy just like you when the final result came out uh, it is a result of uh, last one year's effort if i may say so because uh, this uh, gci the global cyber security index is an official index of the united nations and there is this uh, establishment called the itu international telecommunications union which uh, you know sets all the standards etc uh, for the telecom so the gci index is calculated under the itu so it's a very official uh, index it is not uh, you know something coming out of a think tank and uh, maybe you know some of these indexes are biased depending upon you know which side of the geopolitics you are so having said that uh you know it it has a set of questions in fact almost 150 questions were there uh among and divided in those five aspects that you mentioned uh, the legal aspects uh in the legal aspects they check that uh, which have uh, what are your uh, cyber security legislations so fortunately we were one of the first few countries with the to come out with the it act and uh, you know the 2008 amendment and the recent uh, rules Uh, for the uh, intermediaries and then data protection regulations we did get some points since we had said that our pdp draft has been uh, put up in the parliament so even that every for everything you get some points and then of course the critical infrastructure regulations so we had uh, created this organization called ncipc the national critical information infrastructure protection center so that was from the legal pillar point of view from the technical point of view they wanted to know about our incident response teams and lately let me tell you while certain has always been doing an excellent job recently the sectoral certs uh, that uh, or let me call them c certs cyber security incident response teams uh, they they have come uh, especially in the power sector and the telecom sector i have seen them personally and they have really organized themselves in the power sector you will be surprised that whether it is a generation the uh, transmission the distribution or the grid operations they have incident response teams for all these four sectors and even in the generation they have a separate one for hydro separate one for thermal because nuclear was always separate so the whole sector has become very well organized from the cyber security point of view similarly in the telecom sector now we have a tcert uh, the financial sector tcert has also been recently started under the aegis of certain so a lot of action uh, has taken place in the last within the last year and uh, then the organizational uh, aspect uh, the third pillar was the organizational where they check whether we have a national cyber security strategy 
so here again you know as i mentioned the task force that was created uh, came in useful and we had created a portal uh, in december 2019 which was open to the uh, public and we got about uh, almost 250 responses in that from all organizations also and uh, when i say organizations means like cii etc and uh, individuals also so there for every claim that we make uh, in this online process with the uh, itu you have to give a corresponding proof so that corresponding proof has to be a link which they check over there so it's a iterative process you know then they say ki you claim this but in this link only this is written this is not written so then we justify something else so this this is a it's a year long process and then of course the other two pillars were capacity development and cooperation in which also in the capacity development also we started a number of training courses we have a information security education and awareness program under cdac and in the international cooperation uh, this time i myself has gone as a observer in the un group of government experts as well as uh, we have contributed in both the open ended working group as well as uh, you know the prague conference and the paris call of trust etc so in every aspect that they wanted we had something to show uh, this time and and we took it seriously so uh, uh, then finally when the result came we found ourselves in the top 10 uh, out of 192 countries uh, let me share with you so it is it is a very satisfying feeling and uh, it's good you asked me that so that at least the audience is also aware but one thing also it teaches us is uh, where we are lacking so uh, because they have made a uh, uh, chart sort of a thing uh, based on all the best practices which nations are following so if we find a question that you know we are not sure of the answer or we have not gone into it so it is a good guideline if i may say so now wherever we were falling short for the next year now we've already started you know filling up those voids like capacity development we felt we need to do much more as an example i am saying so i i think it's it's a good exercise it's not only that you know it's it's like a exam you get a result or something it is actually towards creating a better uh, cyber security ecosystem and a safe and secure environment in which our digital adoption is being carried out thank you thank you sir and we hope uh... from 10 we'll soon be able to drop zero and move to number 1 and uh, all the support that you require from all of us that's always there uh, sir also would like to call out that uh, uh, collaboration is one of the key messages you highlighted and want to acknowledge uh, and let this audience know that certain recently participated in publication of a report titled cyber threat signal and which was co-authored by certain teams of australia india korea and sri lanka which again called out global threat trends on cyber security that itself is a great achievement uh, and so you have been following a very consultative process uh, you have extensively consulted all key stakeholders while charting the national cyber security strategy and this is one of the questions coming from the participants as well Uh, so everybody is eagerly awaiting this strategy uh, including the financial services sector and you spoke about it uh, uh, briefly can you give us a sneak peek on uh, what to look forward in strategy and how can the digital and financial services industry start preparing early on doing its bit to secure the ecosystem see firstly uh, let me tell you that uh, cyber security uh i always keep saying it's an international sport because cyber space is a global common you know it's like weather and environment you no know, one country can find solutions and why i'm saying is because if you take your mind back to what happened in the cosmos bank case in pune within a matter of 2 hours there were atm withdrawals from 28 different countries this is the cosmos bank case and since you mentioned financial sector i thought i'll give this example so the 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 criminals have collaborated amongst each other now we have to uh, you know uh, collaborate and find solutions so this is happening at different levels something is happening at the united nations level where uh, it has actually taken a very long time it has taken more than 15 years to come out with 11 non binding norms for responsible in, uh, state behavior in the cyber space so uh, again since this un group of government expert exercise i was there and i saw that how different nations uh, you know try and uh, fight for every word that is written in that 
and there are a lot of discussions on that. So that is one at the UN level. It, it is going slowly, but the, it is going in the right direction. Then there are regional level, uh, you know, cooperations. We have uh, now recently you would have heard of the Quad uh, getting together, uh, and then of course there is the SCO, and there are other regional level. Uh, we have still not joined the Budapest Convention, which is a group of 62 countries, where again cyber crime is uh, one of the aspects. Uh, uh, and uh, I feel that now the Interpol has to, you know, have some sort of a cyber cooperation. And this is very serious because uh, the cyber criminals, as I said, in every mafia gang uh, around the world today, there is a cyber cell. And uh, some some action is taking place. You may have recently heard of an exercise called Operation Trojan Horse, uh, where about 16 countries got together and almost seven to 800 criminals were caught, you know, where they had planted their own device and then they tracked them, etc. So internationally things are happening, but a lot more needs to be done uh, in, as far as the international collaboration is concerned. Uh, as far as the strategy is concerned, uh, the, uh, you know, it, it is a whole of a nation approach that we are process, uh, processing, uh, professing, as I said, that uh, there is this concept called CBDR, Common But Differentiated Responsibility. That means everyone has a responsibility. The citizen has some responsibility, as I said, citizen is most important. The businesses have uh, some responsibility. The academia has some responsibility. And of course, the government has uh, some responsibilities towards protecting the national cyberspace. So now we're talking of a national cyberspace. We are associating an element of sovereignty in it. And we are saying that how do we uh, create a safe, secure, resilient, trusted, vibrant cyberspace for our national prosperity. So this is the broad theme of the new strategy. It is like a guideline which addresses the entire ecosystem. So it will address, you know, your aspect of uh, uh, cyber crime. It is addressing capacity building, uh, audits, uh, research and development. So all aspects uh, uh, will be uh, addressed in this strategy. A number, a number of de deliverables are going to be there and uh, it is going to be in the public domain. So I'm as eager as you are in the fact that it uh, comes out at the earliest and uh, we are all awaiting for that. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, before I summarize this session, one last question I had uh, for you is what keeps the National Cyber Security Coordinator awake at night? <laughs> well, uh, you know, cyberspace, uh, there is a quotation that cyber security is a marathon uh, without a finish line. And uh, in cyberspace, you see, unlike in the uh, real world, in the other domains of land, air, speed, uh, the sea, if there is an attack, uh, then it is a visible attack. And a lot of, you know, we will, I mean, the world knows about it. But in cyberspace, things are happening as we speak. So uh, uh, it, this situation is quite serious. And my most, uh, you know, biggest worry is the critical sector that. Uh, now with the cyber physical systems being attacked, and you heard of you know power outages taking place in USA, etc. So how do we ensure that our critical sector uh, remains safe is the most important thing. And today the critical sector includes everything. You know, like in Florida, USA, and Israel, the water treatment plant was uh, affected, and they increased the levels of chlorine or uh, sodium hydroxide, etc., so that it reached a poisonous level. And today, you know, any sector you name, there is automation. So if you fiddle with that and you can create mayhem. So that is uh, priority one is, of course, the critical sector. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And to summarize this session, sir, first uh, answering your question on pursuit 2021. So it's a pursuit for a lot of things, endeavor to uh, get insights, continue supporting. And as you mentioned, CBDR. Each one of us has a role to play and we'll continue to pursue that. Uh, uh, sir, it was great having you and uh, uh, thank you for all the insights. And, and as we transition from, as we have transitioned from a port and moat model to a tele structure, uh, happy to know that uh, there is a great work which is happening in terms of the new strategy coming out, cooperations which is taking place. The role cyber security audit has to play. It's just not in a tick in the box. And responsibility of the board and things that the CISO is going to do 
in the coming environment. Uh, sir, pleasure having uh, you. It's always, always a pleasure to listen to your insights. On behalf of the IAMI and delegates, thank you very much for giving us time uh, for the keynote address today. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Pant, for giving your time, and thank you, uh, Mrs. Torelia, for moderating the session. Uh, to uh, to summarize, uh, uh, we'd like to thank our session partners, Refinitive, our gold partner, Riaketa, our bronze partner, Onfido, and our knowledge partner, EY. And, uh, and we hope for the delegates for the going for the next sessions. Thank you, everyone, and it was a pleasure with your insights. Thank you. Thank you. Stay safe. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you.